Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at this little fella right here, Unk, and it is by Dave Grigger. It is a game for two to five players. Takes a little bit like about 30 minutes to play, maybe a little bit longer depending on the people that you're playing with. So it's a very light little card game that you can play with two to five players. Let's get down to the table and I'll show you. So here I have a four player game of Ankh set up for you. You have these papyrus cards that are separate from the rest of the mummy cards. You'll choose one of them randomly and place it face up to begin the game as the Pharaoh's requirements for the gifts. And then you'll shuffle the rest into the draw pile, deal four out to everybody, and then you'll be able to uh, start the game. Now the papyrus cards are the important thing because they generate the requirements that the Pharaoh is looking for. And so blue gifts he really wants, which will give a bonus of times two points. Red gifts he would like to have, so he gives a bonus of times one points. These are gifts that he doesn't want, the yellow ones. And then the green ones he really doesn't want, and those will actually give you negative points when scoring takes place. And then the number here is how many gifts need to be in front of at least one of the players in order for the round to end and scoring to begin. So in your hand of cards, you will have these cards here and they match whatever the requirements are here. So yellows are going to be giving me no points at all. The green ones are going to be giving me negative points and I don't want any of those. So I do have another card here that is a papyrus card that I also can play. On your turn, you're going to do one of three things. You're either going to be playing a card from your hand, either a mummy card or a papyrus card, or you're going to be making a sacrifice where you can take any number of cards from your hand and discard them and then draw that many extra cards back into your hand. So on my turn, as I look at my hand here, both of all of my mummy cards are going to be giving me either no points or negative points. That's not good. You want to have the most points possible. But I do have this papyrus card in my hand that gives me that's basically the opposite of that card here. So maybe I want to, on my turn, play that papyrus card down there and change the values that are there. Or maybe I want to try to be secretive and you know keep this card in my hand and play one of those guys down. At the end of my hand, I draw back up and now it's the next person's turn. So over the course of the game, this may be how cards are played out and it comes back to my turn and I'm going to change the uh, requirements that the Pharaoh is asking for, which really makes my hand the best out here and ranks everybody else's not so good at all. But even if, let's say the next person says, you know what, I'm just going to count my losses and we'll go from there. And if they play a fifth card here, then it will end and cause a scoring round. But maybe they won't do that because, you know, they have some negative points over here that they may want to get rid of, whatever it might be. So let's say that this person says, you know what, we're going to go ahead and play the two. Uh, I'm going to draw a card back up. And now we're going to be going through a scoring phase because this person has one, two, three, four, five cards up here, which is the requirement to begin or trigger a scoring round. At this point, you would simply tabulate the points that are necessary. For example, uh, yellows are getting times two. So this person has seven, eight, nine. That's 18 points. These are getting zero points, and this is getting minus three points. So that is 15 points over here. Over here, this person is getting six points from their green cards and 12, so that's 18 over here. This person is getting actually negative one point because these three cards are giving zero points altogether, and that person is getting negative one. So they have negative one point, and then over here, this person is getting negative seven points. You tabulate your points, and then you continue uh, to the next round where all of these cards would be wiped away, and a brand new round begins with the topmost uh, papyrus card going there. 
And then whoever gets to 50 points first is the winner of the game. And you can also play longer games with 100 points or 150 points. It really just, you can really set the point total at whatever you'd like it to be. So that is Ankh by David Grigger, put out by Hook and Friends, or Hook and Friends, I don't know how you pronounce that, but you get the idea. Uh, it is a very, very light, simple game where you're simply trying to collect sets and uh, the right kinds of sets, depending on whatever papyrus card is at the top of the, uh, of the discard pile. And that's about it. Uh, you're simply trying to score the most points. It's kind of a race to get to 50 points or whatever point total you choose to put on top of that at the beginning of the game. So it's a race to get to a certain number of points. Whoever gets there first is the winner. Um, there aren't any, even any, even any, there aren't any tiebreakers even. So that's kind of a strange thing as well because we actually did have uh, a, a tie and there was no tiebreakers, which is unfortunate um, because if you're going to have games that rely upon points as an end factor, then you probably want to throw in some, some tiebreakers, even if it's just a simple, you know, flip of a coin or something, even that would be kind of lame. But to have no tiebreakers, hmm, not cool. But minor dip pick really for me in that respect, because this is a very simple, light filler game, literally, uh, that you can play while somebody else is setting up the next game or what have you. Uh, it's a very simple game and the artwork is great. The card stock is very good as far as uh, how the cards feel in your hands and all that good stuff. It is, they are black bordered cards, but I mean, they're gonna show their wear a little bit more, but they do look really good. So there is that give and take there. The gameplay is pretty simple and it, sometimes it'll feel like you really don't have any choice. This is definitely the best card that I can play. Um, or I definitely need to just dump my hand and get a new set of cards because what I have now isn't gonna help me at all. There is that, and it also has that flux feel to it where the, the rules can change at the drop of a hat because you, if somebody plays one of their papyrus cards and changes the requirements from the Pharaoh, then your tableau and the cards in your hand that you've been building really aren't any good anymore. That situation can happen as well. So there is that, I guess you could call it a screwage factor uh, between the different players, but at the same time, it's so light, doesn't really bother me that much because this is really not meant as a focal point in the game night. It's meant as a filler palette cleanser, maybe you wanna say it that way, whatever it is. It's very light, very simple, and it was decently fun for what it is. So I'm gonna give it a go ahead and give it a uh, one and thumb up, not the half because it is good for a filler game, but beyond that, I'd rather play something else. So that is Ankh from Dave Grigger, and we'll see you guys on the flip side.